Good morning and welcome to Pistols Progress episode 32. I'm Heather Smith. I'm the creator of BarrelRacingTips.com and lately I've been taking you a ride behind the scenes along with me and my barrel horse pistol as I get them in shape for competition. So today I would like to talk a little bit about making corrections at speed and I have a couple other topics to share with you. Really quick things that came to me as I was riding today. So um, you'll have to tell me I am out here in the covered arena where we just finished riding. We just got a lot of rain over the weekend and um, so there's a little bit of wind. So if the wind noise is too much, just let me know in the comments. But before we really get rolling, I would love to hear how your weekend went. So since it's Monday morning and I come to you with Pistols Progress every Monday, Wednesday and Friday morning. Um, Monday is the perfect time to check in and be accountability partners and so I would love to know how your weekend went with your horses and um, tell me a win even if that's something that you learned like there's always a win so I would love to hear about it in the comments so pistol I'm just um, walking him out he was kind of running out of air today it's it doesn't feel like terribly warm it's overcast but it is just like incredibly humid you can probably tell I mean like I'm just like moist all over <laughs> but that's the result of all this moisture that's coming through which is really been a blessing but um so a couple of things one of the things i mentioned in the title is i wanted to talk about making corrections at speed and so we were able to turn up the volume a little bit um as far as his readiness was there for that on the pattern he's feeling absolutely incredible uh physically which is really exciting and so I just, um, I wanted to put this out there, like a lot of people tend to do a lot of work in their slow work and, um, you know, work on fixing and improving things. And then they just jump back into like going 9-0 and make that leap between the slow work and the fast work, like too quickly, or it's just like too much of a gap. When all the things that are happening in a run, I can assure you are happening going slow. It's just that they're less noticeable and we as riders and trainers are not aware enough to actually feel it. And so if we really legitimately do feel like everything is absolutely 100% correct going slow, then the best thing to do to really give our horse the benefit of the doubt, because it can be really, it's not that there isn't a time and a place to make like a big correction in the middle of, you know, like laying down a fast practice run, but a better thing to do is to sort of ease back into it and turn up the speed and turn up to like a three-quarter lope or um and get a little bit faster and those old things those old habits that they're defaulting to you're very very likely to feel them and then you can go ahead and correct it without it being like so abrupt and so sudden and like the horse is feeling like they're kind of getting ambushed which ends up creating some sort of tension and um and like uh you know, it creates uh, some resentment almost, or they get a little bit fearful of making a mistake if we have to do that. So the best thing to do is just prepare them really well as we turn up the volume at every step and really hold ourselves accountable for being aware. And so speaking of that awareness, one of the things I've been doing, so, you know, I only have, like, I, I am not going to wait until his first run back on September 1st to get feedback for where we're at and what he needs to do. He's been my partner for, for years now, and even though we had, like, that long break when he was uh, sidelined, it's like I, have, I already have a ton of feedback that I can go back to and study and learn from. Like, everything that I need to know about how to improve um, what what he's offering me like I really already have access to it and the thing is is that I can do everything that I know and then I can use that fix it up and then continuously in every run and every ride and every step be learning more and more from it but what I like to do is go back and review videos or I might pick out videos of horses that have a really similar style to him that I really like that are really clocking and I will watch them and study like how those jockeys are riding those horses with that similar style and think about like making a comparison and being like well what is it that they're doing that is helping this this combination come together that maybe I can do as well and so it's really important that we develop this view it's like if we are in the middle of and just in the middle and focusing on everything too up close it's like we can't see the forest for the trees 
and we needed to develop almost like this aerial view and just sort of like get really present and visualize in our head like what it would feel like for this to like really come together and be correct and it's like okay where do I need to be how do we need to be what action steps do we need to take to actually get there and put it together so it's really important to take that step back and another thing that I'll do I've mentioned this before but um, I will go back and forth between watching like the, a video of this of a really awesome horse who has a similar style and is just clocking amazing and then watch our video so that I have this boom boom like side by side comparison otherwise if we're just watching our stuff like again we don't um, we can kind of miss like uh, where we need to fill in the gaps and so um, as I was as I was saying about correcting things at speed today I, I kind of put pistol on his honor and I let him roll to the first barrel like I did some exercises where I really asked him to be correct and then I thought I'm gonna roll him to the first barrel and just kind of not really help him or micromanage and see what he offers me and as it's not all that out of the ordinary he got a little flat he got a little front endy which was his habit you know has been his habit in the past and so I just corrected him and I say hey pistol it's like I'm saying you know what we've been working on and every day and we've been um, I've really been teaching you to engage and use your body a little differently well this applies when we're going fast like that old way of doing things isn't how we're gonna do it anymore and so I'm rerouting like the neural pathways and those habits in his body so he's not going to be defaulting to that old way of doing things at speed and so essentially what I did was that I just interrupted that habit and just asked him to soften to my hands and come back to me and back up and then we just settled for a moment and then I asked him to go again and if I felt him get kind of leaning and front endy and kind of flat going to the first barrel then I'm like elevate come back to me and I, I we can do that with um, without this like sort of punishment attitude and and um, it, it just is a game changer for them because um, I mean I'm really firm and I'm quick and I'm very particular but I can be um, particular again without that sort of uh, them feeling like they're getting in trouble and which essentially leads to like stress and worry and tension and it's not really what we want it's not really like a part of what we want we want that like ultimate level of respect without fear and there's like a really fine line between the two and once in a while we have to kind of cross over it to get that level we want but we want to be really cautious and careful about you know that where we're maintaining right there so the other thing I was going to mention um, that as I've been sort of just kind of visualizing and thinking about what is it, what is it that we as a team need to take to go to the next level? And so this is so, so interesting. So I took a little video clip of myself just, you know, doing my workout at home the other day and shared on my stories. And I was watching like, because again, we what gets measured gets improved and if we don't measure things we're not gonna know so I was just watching myself move and like he and I are both like kind of long and lanky and like he will always be one of those horses that he could he's never gonna look like he's running fast um, he's just so big and so long strided I mean that doesn't mean that he can't clock phenomenally but that's um you know he's one of those really big horses who kind of always looks a little bit like they're in slow motion and I'm really tall and lanky myself and so I guess the same thing sort of applies to me but the thing of it is is that I could see in the way my motions were where it's like my alignment of my body like when I was moving my arms wasn't really perfectly straight it was kind of like uh, like my posture wasn't great and my movement it just looked almost like kind of tired and a little bit sloppy and I mean my posture is something I've been aware of and I've worked on and I'm addressing but that video was like really eye-opening because I thought I need to hold myself to higher standards for being like really impeccable with my timing and I thought you know what I need to be able to like go outside my comfort zone and to like basically train myself to be something 
different and better at a higher level like I need to be so on my game and that means that I need to have like maximum mental clarity maximum like freshness and rest it means like I need I can't be going into what I'm doing with him or my workouts like feeling extremely tired or fatigued I need to be a hundred percent like in the moment and focus on what I'm doing and making the most of like every single step and having like maximum awareness and so it means just like creating space to really, really focus and make the most of everything and then giving myself and him all the tools. And so for him, what it really comes down to is soundness is a huge factor. Um, diet, like he needs to have the energy to be able to just crack and fire, you know, between the barrels. And mentally, like training wise, like he needs to realize that it's his responsibility and his expectations are to absolutely put in his best effort. And so there are all these contributing factors that sort of when I hover above and sort of try to get like this aerial view of like where we're at, this like different perspective, I, I become more aware of all these things, you know, and get these ideas for taking things to the next level for both of us and holding us both accountable because he is a kind of horse especially who will always give you what you ask, but you have to ask. And, you ha and he is not likely to give you more than what you ask. <laughs> Dot com, on the other hand, is like, hang on, he doesn't even, it's like he's going for it 100% whether you're, whether you're with him or not. And Pistol is just gonna give you what you ask for him. So that means that I have to be absolutely impeccable with the energy that I bring, the focus that I bring, the timing that I bring, and everything. And he will absolutely rise to the occasion, but I cannot waver in what I'm offering. So I'll catch up with um, <laughs> comments here. So good morning, Charlotte, Sharon, Elizabeth. Oh, thanks, Katie. <laughs> so um, anyway, that was uh, something I was gonna offer. As far as corrections, on the second barrel, I could feel, so this is a huge, huge tip I've mentioned before, but and this, this really keeps us correct ourselves because we tend to do funky things with our body when we're turning a barrel versus if we were doing a correct circle without a barrel. And really the form and everything that we want in our bodies and our horses to have, if we were like loping a, bar a perfect circle without a barrel or with a barrel, it should really be the same, right? And so like if I'm loping a circle and I just visualize a barrel, he'll stay so square and nice and like engaged and where if I go to do the same kind of circle around the barrel, he'll revert back to those habits he has and where he kind of pulls a little bit, you know? And so basically what I remind myself of is that when I'm coming around the barrel, I do not look at the barrel, I just keep it in my peripheral vision and I just pretend like that barrel isn't even there and we're just staying square and doing a correct circle and what's really key to that is not getting ahead of ourselves and just keeping our eyes just a hair ahead of where we're going and definitely not doing things with because as soon as we turn our head or our eyes are looking our body is going to tend to get kind of off balance and do um, funny things too and so um, that was really eye-opening and I've mentioned that before but definitely try that and apply it go lope a circle like right next to the barrel get it perfect and then lope a circle around the barrel and then Keep at that until you have made an improvement, you know, and give your horse a little rest. But then if you need to, go back and say, hey, do this perfect circle here without the barrel, and then this, the way we did it right here, applies to the barrel itself. So um, that was just amazing. So what I did essentially is that when he came around the second barrel and I felt him sort of like get flat, like strung out and start to pull, I just picked him up and backed him up and got him engaged and just started again and just reminded him, hey, you know, I need you to stay engaged and what I really want to do is kind of hustle him and like get his hind end un under him so that he stays elevated and he basically can't, he's not in a position where he can get low and flat and pull like this around the back side of that second. It's actually really fast, this little habit he has when he does that, but it would end up leading to some serious ground trouble on questionable ground. So everything I do, I'm th really thinking about, you know, the future and taking what's great and making it even better. And so, um, good morning, Sabrina. 
Let me see. So I was going to cover um, making corrections at speed, making sure that we're not jumping from like slow work to like fast work and then ambushing our horse and actually um, creating some tension or fear or resentment and really being really, really, really aware and like testing as we go and doing it gradually and giving them the benefit of the doubt and really doing our best to prepare them. And then I mentioned how important it is for us to kind of get that aerial view and perspective so that um, we, we're not like stuck in, in, down in the middle of things and we can see like the whole forest and not just the tree in front of our face so that we can actually get a visual and a picture for where we want to be, where we're at, and what it really is that is going to take us to that next level. And for everybody, it's going to be a little different and it's going to vary a little bit between horses and so forth. But like I said, I am not waiting until that first run to get feedback about where we need to be and what we need to do. Every single day I'm getting feedback. And I can't recommend enough. Set your video, set your phone in a fence post and get video footage of your of just your slow work and your dry work, everything, and you will learn abs like so much from it. Um yeah, thanks Randy, that's great to hear. So I made some notes and there was um there was one other thing I was gonna mention today, and I've probably already gave you plenty to lick and chew on. And so I'm trying to think of what that other, that one other thing was. So yeah, I, that, I think I covered it all. It was uh, pretending like a barrel isn't even there and to get your circles really correct. I talked a little bit about making corrections at speed and what that looked like for us today. And, um, and then I talked about just being absolutely impeccable with your focus, with your timing, with just being in the moment. And one of the big obstacles I think to this is, is that we overextend ourselves. And so we get tired, we get a little lax, we get a little sloppy and we start to think, ah, it doesn't matter. And it's like, trust me, with a horse like this and I think with any horse, if we want them to be just performing at their absolute max, every single interaction, every moment, it is critical, like it is important. Like the way, if, if I hold him accountable for following a feel when I'm leading him and I'm hand walking him, that is gonna completely re relate and connect to how he responds to me in a run. And I don't, I don't wanna leave anything on the table. Like we put so much expense and time and then we invest our heart and soul into our barrel racing. And it's like, I, I want to be able to look back and say, I did everything in my power to absolutely prepare for this. And then we can just turn it over and trust that the results are going to come eventually, you know, and that's really all we can do is our absolute best. But we have to look at ourselves and be honest and ask, is what we're offering our horse every day and ourselves, that contract that we have with ourselves, is it really absolutely our best? And if not, have an honest conversation about what is actually in the way of that. And a lot of times we're just trying to do too much and we're not doing any of it to the best of our, the absolute best of our ability. So I hope that's a blessing to you today. I'm going to sign off. He really needs to cool out some more. So I'm going to keep hand walking him, but I'll be tuning in here live six o'clock central tomorrow, Tuesday evening for Q and A Tuesday. And then I'll be back with him here at the covered arena. Uh, Wednesday morning since we got so much rain I'll be riding here for um, the next week or so so um, it's always a blast coming to you and uh, doing these lives and uh, filling you in on how he's doing we do have a barrel race coming up this weekend where we're gonna exhibition and kind of turn up the turn up the volume a little bit so that's really exciting oh my gosh that was that was exciting so the wind actually just tipped the phone over so anyway um, Thank you so much for tuning in. It's always so much fun. And uh, I love hearing from you guys. Hey, Jolene. Hi, Joy. Hey, Stacy. So it's my intention for you to really move forward um, with what I shared today, to think about it, but most importantly, to apply it. So I hope it's been a blessing to you. And until next time, remember, applied knowledge is power.